Hi, in this video I'll be talking about hormone receptors on breast cancer cells. What are hormone receptors, what do they mean, and how do they affect your treatment options? Hormone receptors are proteins in or on the cancer cells. They have nothing to do with levels of hormones in your body. Breast cancer cells can either have or not have hormone receptors. I'm going to talk about the two main kinds of hormone receptors, estrogen receptors and progesterone receptors. Most breast cancer cells have these receptors on them. I'm going to describe what the receptors are and how it interacts to help the cancer cells grow, which of course is something we don't want. So if you picture on the cell a little sort of a seat, if you will, that's the receptor. And in your body, whether you have functioning ovaries or not, you have estrogen. And the estrogen binds to the receptor and that facilitates the cancer cell to grow and divide. Progesterone receptors are very similar. They also sit on or inside the cell, and like the estrogen receptors, they receive hormones. Now our hormone systems are very complicated, so it's not entirely driven by progesterone, but this is an easy way to think about it. So progesterones in the body will bind to the receptor and stimulate the cancer cell to grow. As I said, most breast cancers have the estrogen receptors and most tumors that have the estrogen receptor also have the progesterone receptor. When we're making treatment decisions, we do look at the status of the estrogen receptors and progesterone receptors. Are they present? And even how much is present in the tumor cells? If your tumor had the estrogen and or progesterone receptors, hormonal treatment will be part of your treatment plan. You can learn more about hormonal therapy in our Yerba.com video on hormonal therapy. Next, I'm going to talk about how we figure out if the tumor has the estrogen or progesterone receptors. At the time of your biopsy, in which they take a part of the tumor, usually through a thin metal needle, the tumor will be sent to the pathologist. After that, it's put in paraffin and then sliced into very thin slices. The pathologist will then do special stains on the tumor to see if the estrogen or progesterone receptors are there. Again, whether or not your tumor has estrogen or progesterone receptors has nothing to do with the levels of your own hormones in your body. After you have your biopsy and you have surgery and the tumor is removed, in general, the same tests will be done on the tumor as were done on the biopsy. Sometimes they're not identical, and so additional studies might be done to try to figure out was the tumor really positive for estrogen or progesterone receptors. When you get your biopsy done and it takes a few days to get the results back before you get a call from your doctor, that's because we're spending the time doing those additional tests on the tumor. These are really important in defining what treatment options are available for you. Next, I'm going to talk about how the hormone receptor status plays a role in your treatment. In tumors that are hormone receptor positive, hormonal therapy works to reduce the risk of the cancer coming back in other parts of the body and also in the breast itself. It may also reduce the risk of cancer in your other breast, the breast that did not have the cancer. Hormonal therapy is given as a pill, and one takes the pill once a day, usually for five to 10 years, depending on the characteristics of the tumor and also how you're tolerating treatment. If you have functioning ovaries, which we find out from your history, whether or not you're having periods or sometimes blood work, we will also recommend in many patients that their ovaries be suppressed, and that can be done temporarily or permanently. You can learn more about this in our video on hormonal therapy. Side effects of hormonal therapy differ according to which medication that you're put on and also your own tolerance for medications. But in general, we talk about hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal discharge or vaginal dryness, 
as well as some muscle aches and pains. Most of these side effects are tolerable for most people. It's very important if you have side effects that you talk with your medical team to help manage those side effects to improve your quality of life and also how long you can stay on the medication. Completing a full course of hormonal therapy is very important in people whose tumors are hormone receptor positive. If your tumor does not have hormone receptors, this is called a hormone receptor negative tumor. In people with hormone receptor negative tumors, we're more likely to recommend chemotherapy, and that's because we don't have hormonal therapy as an option. In addition, hormone receptor negative tumors stand to gain much more benefit from chemotherapy. They're more active. They tend to be more vulnerable to chemotherapy. This doesn't mean that chemotherapy won't be part of your treatment plan if the hormone receptors are positive. I'm going to mention one more receptor. This is not a hormone receptor. It's called the Human Epidermal Growth Factor Receptor 2, or sometimes HER2. This is a protein that, just like the hormone receptors, is expressed on the tumor cell. I bring this up because if the hormone receptors are negative and the HER2 is negative, that's called a triple negative tumor. If you are diagnosed with a triple negative breast cancer and are under the age of 60, we recommend that you have genetic counseling and consider genetic testing because triple negative cancers are more common in people who have an inherited susceptibility to breast cancer. I've covered a lot in this video. To learn more about your hormone receptor status and your treatment options, visit yerba.com. If you like this video, click like and subscribe so more people can find the video.